All righty, welcome back to subnetting part two. Uh, in this next packet, there's going to be a few problems for you to do, uh, very much like how we ended the first packet, except we're going to take it a little bit further, as you'll see in these couple of examples that we're going to do. So here is our first one. We have a 192.10.10.0 address, and we need 14 subnets. And in each subnet, we need at least 14 hosts. So we're going to solve this as we've always done. We're going to take our address. We know that the first three positions we cannot play with. Why? Because this is a class C address. We also know the default subnet mask is triple 255 which means these first three numbers cannot be touched. The only thing we can play with is this last zero, or converting it to binary, the last eight zeros that you hear, see here in the upper right-hand corner. So now we have to decide, are we going to solve this on the side of subnets, or are we going to decide this on the side of hosts? In this particular case, it won't matter. In some examples, you could have two different answers if you solved it from one side versus the other. So we're going to go with the subnet side. So we need 14. So we're going to look at our subnet numbers, which I have in blue, until we have crossed just past something that will give us 14. So we know we can't get 14 out of 2, or 4, or 8, but we can out of 16. So once we pass 16, we're going to strike our line. This is where our subnet will now stop and our host will begin. So we know subnets, there are 16 of them. So we can fill that in for the total number of subnets, 16. If we look at the host side in green, 248, the number before the line is 16. Just so happens it's the same as the number of subnets. Kind of a freak thing. It doesn't happen this way that often. But we know we have 16 total host addresses. But you remember, we're always interested in the usables. And that's really what this needed hosts are. We need to have at least 14. We know there are two addresses we cannot use. So if we subtract two from 16, we are left with 14 good numbers. And yes, that will meet the 14 that we need. The next question is how many bits did we borrow? Well, that means how many from the original line or that third dot to where our new line is, or our new dot will go. And there happens to be one, two, three, four characters, or four bits. So we're going to put a four down here for the number of bits borrowed. The last thing we have to do is our custom subnet mask. And again, we know the very first three 255s cannot be touched. So I'm going to go ahead and put that up here. I'm also going to caution you here for a moment. I often have students that will follow this to the T. They will go ahead and put the first three up here, and they'll forget to go back and put that fourth number. Don't leave it blank, because that would certainly be wrong. What we have to do now is figure out this last one. And we know that each of these bits we borrowed are now ones. And I just happened to, in black, up above, put the binary values. So we know we're going to add 128, 64, 32, and 16. What does that come out to? That comes out to 240. So again, the last number in our custom is 240. And this is exactly what we have done in that last packet. But I'm going to pause this for just a second. 
I'm going to change a little bit of what you see here on the right hand side, and we're going to answer some more specific questions to help us put our network together or our set of subnets. Okay, we're back. We are going to now take it to the next level. And so when we're finished, we have three more questions we're going to ask. And we know that we had uh, 14 subnets we needed. We ended up with 16. But we didn't want to know specifics about the fourth subnet, the eighth, the 13th, and the ninth. Because we need to know those informations for each of our little mini networks, which is what a subnet is. So in order to come up with this, we need to know for each of those 16 subnets, what's the beginning IP address? What is the ending IP address? And so we know the very first address of the very first subnet is going to begin with the address that we were originally given. So that address for that first one is 192.10.10.0. We know that the total number of host addresses are 16. We also know that the first three numbers, and I've said this multiple times, cannot be changed. So all of these answers will have 192.10.10 in them. The only thing that will change is the last number. And so if we start counting numbers until we get to the 16th number it is not going to be 16 but rather it is going to be 15 because remember zero counts as the first number so that's the first range it goes from 0 to 15 that's 16 numbers the second range is going to start at the very next number after the last one so 1 past 15 would be 16. What does it go to when we get 16 more numbers? Well, 192.10.10, and then we should have 31. The third range, 192, 10, 10, one more number, 32. We count to our 16, and we end up with I check my cheat sheet, make sure I don't cheat. 47. Now you notice I kind of had to look there on my, my answer sheet, and there should be an easy way to do this. And I've got a little trick for you. Here's what I suggest you do. If we look at the 192.10.10.0, that was the beginning number. What was the next number? It was 16. If I take and add 16, which is the number of host addresses in each subnet, to 0, I get 16. If I add 16 to that, I have 32. If I add 16 to that, I have 48. If I add 16 to that, I have 64. If I add 16 to that, I have 80. And I can keep on going down across here with 96, 112, 128, 144, 160, 176. And let's stop there for a moment and put in the 192.10.10. That's the same for each of these. 192.10. 10, 192, 10, 10, 192, 10, 10, 192, 10, 10, and so on. A little monotonous, but it is the way it works. And of course, we have it, the space to keep going, but what are our range numbers now? Well, after three is four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We need 13. Let's go ahead and add one more. 192.10.10.192. Okay. Now, if we needed something on up, you know, 14, 15, 16, we'd have to keep going. But obviously, I'm running out of room on my whiteboard. But that just takes care of this column. What about the ending addresses? Well, I have an answer for that too. Just like we did in this last digit on this column, what do I have if I add 16 to 15? Well, I have 31. And if I add 16 to that, I have 47. I can do the exact same thing on this side. So after 47 comes 63, 79, 95, 111, 127, 143. And let's go ahead and put some of these numbers in here. I don't want to get my columns out of whack. So, 192.10.10. You can see once you hit a pattern, it really is just the continuation of that pattern. Each one of these ranges is a subnet that would be usable. Each one of them would all have the same subnet mask. That subnet mask is just saying on this original network, how am I dividing it up? And so a router would understand with this subnet mask that each one of these is its own unique network. We keep going after 143 and 159, 191. I'm sorry, 175. I skipped one. Then 191. And last, as far as we're going to go, 207. Finish up my chart. At this point, I have done enough subnets that I can answer my four questions. Now remember on each one of these subnets, the very first number is referred to as the subnet number. The very last one is known as the broadcast number. Now when a packet is going from one network to another, it has to calculate the subnet so it knows it gets to the right network. And so this network number cannot be used by an individual device. This is a number that refers to the entire network. If I'm in any of these networks and I want to send some message out that every machine sees, I use the broadcast address. When a machine receives and understands that's the broadcast number, it listens to that message, even though the number is not the same as itself, but it realizes it's a broadcast. So therefore, this one also I cannot use on an individual machine. This is why we have assignables or the usables, meaning what is in between. So on this first range, for instance, I can't use the zero, but the first number I can use is the dot one. I can use the two, the three, the four, all the way up. I can't use the 15, but I can use the 14. So in this case, the usables would be dot one through dot 14. So you're basically adding one to the left and subtracting one from the right. So let's go ahead and answer our questions. The very first one is the fourth subnet range. 
So I look for my fourth range. One, two, three, four. Here it is. So our beginning number or our uh, subnet number is 48. So 192, 10.10.48. And it runs all the way to the 63. So 192, 10, 10, 63. Now this asks for the range, the subnet range. That means all the numbers. The next question wants to know, what is the eighth subnet? So I have to find the eighth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Remember the subnet is the very first number. So that's the only thing I want up there. And that's 112. 192, 10, 10, 112. The next one wants to know the broadcast or the last number in the 13th range. So again, I find the 13th. It happens to be the last one that I put up just because I was running out of space. The very last number is 207. So therefore, 192, 10, 10, 127. Last but not least, the ninth assignable. Again, I have to find the ninth, and it happens to be this range here. That starts at 128, goes to 143, but this is the assignables. I can't assign the first one. I cannot assign the last one, so I need the numbers in the middle. So we're going to add one to the left. 1 plus 128 makes 129. So 192, 10, 10, 129. We're going to subtract one on the right. It happens to be 143. I subtract one and it's 142. So 192, 10, 10, 142. And there I have my questions answered for subnet ranges, for subnet numbers, for broadcast numbers, or for assignable numbers. We're going to do one more. So hang tight as I get ready. All righty, through the magic of computers, I have reset our board. I have a new network address of 195.100.0.0. And this time I'm only looking for one thing. And that happens to be when I'm finished, each of my subnets needs to have at least 28 usable host addresses because I'm going to have 28 machines in each subnet. So the very first thing I'm going to do, as I usually do, is ask what the address class is. And of course, 195, the very first number, falls within the range of the C class. We know the default subnet mask for a C is triple 255. Dot zero. And to make things speed up a little bit, I went ahead and put our IP address up here. Again, the first three numbers I can't touch because the first three are 255s. But I did expand that last zero to eight digits. Now notice we had a zero here, and that's okay. Sometimes you'll have that. It is all determined on the number you get from ICANN. But since this is a class C, these first three cannot be touched. Now, I already have my subnet numbers up there, my host numbers, my binary values. All I have to do is look at what am I trying to solve for? The answer is 28. The secondary answer is host. So I need to look at the green numbers where it says host, and I need to start until I pass a number that will allow me to get 28. So I know I cannot get 28 from 2, 4, 8, or 16, but I can on 32. So once I pass 32, that's where I draw my line. Now I can start answering some questions. The very first one is the number of subnets. Well, here in the blue are my subnets. What's the number before the line? 
8. So I'm going to put 8 under the number of subnets. Next, I want to know the total host addresses. Again, the host is green. What's the number before the line? 32. So I put my 32 down there. I always want to know how many are really usable. And of course, in order to find that, we're going to subtract 2. So 32 minus 2 leaves me a remainder of 30 numbers. I need 28 of them, which means there's going to be two that I either won't use or will be there for future growth. And either way you look at it, I'm meeting my need of 28. Last but not least, how many bits have been borrowed? Well, again, how many bits are there from the last dot to our line? Three. So we have borrowed three bits. Last but not least, subnet mask. Each of those zeros are now ones. The remaining five zeros stay zeros. We have to figure out what is the value of these three binaries added together. So 128, 64, 32 added together should be 224. So our custom subnet mask, triple 255, just as normal, but my zero is now 224. Let me pause for a moment while I get the board ready to dive into those eight ranges. All righty, I went ahead and created our chart because the main thing we want to get out of this section is just making sure you're able to read this chart to get to these answers. So when we left, we had answered everything in this first part. We knew that we had 32 total host addresses. And so that's what I used for my chart. Again, the very first number is always the number that we started with. So in this case, 195.100.0.0. Because it's a class C, the first three numbers will remain the same. The only one that changes is the last one. Since we have 32 total host addresses, we count in 32. 0 plus 32 is 32. 32 plus 32 is 64. Plus 32 is 96. And so on and so forth for our eight ranges. Because when we figured it up, we had eight subnets. So 8 will get us all the way that we can go with this number. The second part of my column are the broadcast numbers. Again, if we go 32 numbers from 0, we're at 31. And then if we start adding 32, 63, 95, 127, all the way to the highest number we can have in any octet is 255. If you do this chart, and any one of those four numbers is more than 255, you have made a mistake. Each one of these, remember, is represented by eight binary bits. The largest number, all eight ones, is 255. So we can never go over 255 in any single number. So we've got our chart together. The ranges are what we're looking for. And the very first one wants to know what's the subnet range, which means the entire thing, for the fifth subnet. So we come down here, one, two, three, four, five. We want this whole thing. So 128 is the first number. So 195, 100, 0, 128, all the way to 159. 100, 0, 1, 5, 9. Remember, subnet range means the entire thing. Next, we want the sixth subnet number. That means the very first number only. So we find the sixth range. What's the very first number? It happens to be 160. So 195, 100, 0, 160. The third thing it wants to know is what is the broadcast number in that same sixth range. Remember, broadcast is the very last number. 
So what's the very last number in that sixth range? 191. So 195, 100, 0, 191. Last but not least, on the third subnet, we want to know the usables. So here's my third. Starts at 64, goes to 95, but I cannot use 64. I cannot use 95. It's only the numbers in between. So we're going to start with 195. 100, 0.65, because we're going to add one to the left, and we're going to go all the way up to one number short or subtract one from the right. 195, 100, 0, 94. It's always the same process, just take it one step at a time. I have one more little piece of an example I'd like to show you. So hang on, I will be right back. Okay, we're not going to go all the way through this, but I do want you to be aware of it because you have one problem that is going to look just like this. And the first thing you should notice is I'm not asking you for how many hosts I need at the top or, or the network needs, not the number of subnets that are needed. But I've got this extra piece hanging on the end of my network address, slash 26. And this is known as CIDR, C-I-D-R, uh, which is Classless Interdomain Routing. You don't necessarily need to know that uh, acronym at this point. As you go into other classes, you will see it again. But we need to know what in the world do I do with this 26? Now, all the problems you're going to do in this second book, because we're really just wanting to introduce you to networking, are going to be class C, which means all of our default subnet masks are going to be triple 255.0. All of our customs are going to be triple 255 and some other number that we're going to figure. And we're going to cal calculate this based on this 26. That 26 means one thing. Now, we haven't necessarily said this in either of these two videos yet, but every IP address is known as a 32-bit number. And you may have read this, and it probably, okay, that sounds okay, but what does that really mean? That means if I take any IP address and I convert it into binary, there are going to be 31 ones and zeros. Or I'm sorry, 32 ones and zeros. That being said, the network portion is 26 in this example. So that means I'm going to have 26 ones and everything else is going to be zeros. So if I lay that out and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 16, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. This is the subnet mask. We already said just a moment ago that eight ones, the highest you can have in any of those numbers, is 255. guess what? There's my triple 255. I only have to convert this last binary number, one, one, and uh, six zeros, into a decimal number. So if I apply that up here as one, one, and my six zeros, I know I have to add 128 and 64 together to get a total of 192. And so that is my custom subnet mask. Triple 255, 192. Now that being said, I have borrowed two bits. They're right here. That's where my line goes. 
now I can start answering those questions. How many subnets? Well, the number before the line is four. How many total hosts? Well, the number before the line is 64. Total usable, if I subtract two, 62. How many bits did we borrow? Well, they're right up here, there's two of them. And so now the only thing I would have to do is lay out my four ranges. We know the very first number is always going to be what we started with. What am I counting in this case? I'm counting in a total of 64s. So 230, 14, 64. 200, 30, 14, 128, 200, 30, 14, 192. I have to figure out the last column. So one less from 64 is going to be 63 up here. 200, 30, 14, 63. And I can either subtract one from each or I can add 64. The same answers will come out. 30, 14, 127, 230, 14, 191. And the very last number we are always going to end up with is where I have all eight ones or 255. And so now if I had those range questions, I could answer what is the subnet range of number two? Or what is the subnet number of three? What is the broadcast of four? And so on and so forth. So in your packet, which states workbook part two, there are two examples, the same two that we went over just a moment ago, and five problems for you to do. Four of them are going to be straightforward with Outsider asking you to either calculate by finding the host or the subnets. One problem is going to be set up like this. So with that, I thank you for paying attention and all that you've learned. Uh, you're going to be applying this as you go forth in the networking classes, uh, Cisco classes, and subnetting is something that takes place in just about any business environment you're ever going to work in. So again, thank you. Please do those five problems.